Do you enjoy crafting, but are you ready for a new challenge? Well, we may have just the thing for you in today's Creative Corner, the ultimate challenge with Karen Boyer with Daisy Lane Scrapbooking and Craft Mall. And you brought mouse traps. I don't know whether to be excited or scared. <laughs> you should be a little of both. You know, okay. sometimes crafting's a challenge because it's a new skill or something, and sometimes crafting's a challenge because we're given stuff to work with that's maybe a little non-traditional. Yeah. So let's go with that route for this one, okay? Well, not only is it a challenge, but it really gets your creative juices going. It does. Yep. And we're all about repurposing stuff nowadays, using things that you would not consider normally to be a craft item into something. And so this is definitely it. And with the summer ending and back to school coming up, these would make fabulous back to school gifts for the teachers. Just a little something. And literally, these things can be made so cheap using up all your little leftovers. So are you ready? I, well, yeah, except okay. I'm presuming you're going to do something to the trap yeah. so it's not going to snap. No, I'm going to have you hold your finger like right here. Okay, yeah. all this right. is to keep the Just kids away. Clear. So, um, <laughs> so all we're working with is just traditional, the little cheap wood mouse traps. Okay. And uh, you do have to remove a couple parts to begin with. So you're going to remove the hardware that actually does cause it to self-clamp. So you're going to just take those out. A little simple pair of pliers, not a lot of work. Oh, wow, They're okay. really not in there that hard. So that's just going to peel out of there. Super easy. Just like that one is not. <laughs> oh, there we go. So that's what it looks like when you're done. And everything else you're just going to leave on there, which just basically leaves this spring mechanism. Okay. Um, so it's simple enough. And then I paint the edges to mine, like this one here. And honestly, I love the Distress Paints by Tim Holtz because you don't have to get out an ink, or you don't have to get out a paintbrush and everything. Oh, yeah. The paint's all in it. just goes across the edge. Yeah. And do them like that. So super simple. If you want to do that step, and if you don't, you can skip it, and the natural wood looks nice, too. This almost reminds me of those things that you use for bingo. Bingo daubers, yeah. yeah but they yeah. have an acrylic paint in them, so they're great for a quick. You recap them, and they'll last forever. They don't dry up. Awesome. Really, they come in, like, 40-some colors. Which so. is really handy, especially if you're doing a lot of different kinds of crafts, and you need right. to build your toolbox. Or with kids, and you don't want the whole mess. It's really self-contained painting, so. Okay, so once we've got so our once edges you've got painted. That, yep. Then this is the smallest amount of paper that it takes. A simple, it's about a one and a half by three and a half. Um, and you can easily trace the back of it to fit. Um, and so all you're going to do is you're going to take this paper and you're just going to cut it in half. So if you want to snip that the I rest can. of the way up, I've started for you so you can kind of yeah. see where half is. Yeah, thank you. So, okay, so this is just, this feels just like regular cardstock. It is cardstock, yeah. And so you could use a lighter weight paper, but most of the decorative papers you're going to find are a cardstock weight. Okay. So you're going to have a little bit heavier weight paper. Is it dumb to think maybe if I have like, samples of wallpaper or other things like you that? You know, can in I the scrapbooking world, we get a lot of people that ask that, can I use wallpaper or scraps? And we say no because of the archival quality is an issue. We want to keep those safe oh, papers okay. in there. But this would be a great example of using leftover wallpaper scraps or um, little pretty napkins. There's a lot of different papers that you could use to decorate this and such a small amount. And so then, you just know what your project is and how long you're planning to keep it. Right. And something like this, is you're going to weigh, not worry about the archival yeah. quality. Your photos aren't involved. And so this is a multimedium. It's just a, it's a gel adhesive that it works really well for this. And so all you're going to do is just brush that on. To, and you're going to just be working at one side at a time. Hmm. And then this simply t goes on. And then you can lift this up. You can use your pliers or if you have a strong fingernail. A bit, yeah. yeah, you're going to just lift that up and glue that into place. Now, if you like the shellac look, you can go back over it with your gel medium and glue that into place, too. You can also alter the edges if you like it, that little oh, shabby sheet. That, we I do a lot of the look. inking. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And now on this side, it does have the little issue of the um, spring, the little notches that hold it in. Mm -hmm. So on this one, all you're going to do is just going to make two little slits with your pair of scissors, um, and then that will allow it to slide right in. You're going to glue it down the same. Okay. And then I've already done one, so we've got this cute okay. little cherry one here. I was going to say, that's precision cutting, yep. Karen. I don't know that so, I can handle I know. that. That's too much of a challenge. <laughs> so. And then to Start finish small. it off, all you're going to do is you're going to use pop dots or your glue dots. Okay. And like here, what we've done with some of these is obviously flowers, so we wanted to cover the spring. You don't want to cover it to the point won't, where it won't open, but you do want to hide this spring unless you're doing one of these awesome little jobbies. This is like the steampunk look, so we've included that. And then you can add magnets to the back of these to hang them on a refrigerator. You can put them down um, on the desk for just a notepad holder, and they're great. You can hold notes, hold uh, post-its, you can hold photographs with them. Well, and the great thing, uh, too, about everything it seems like that you bring in is you're all set to make things for people for gifts or for holidays and so I mean this is great for a Father's right, Day especially gift, do like a, a trio of 
three of them that match yeah. would be so cute. Oh, you could do yeah. a U of I one. You could, it's a very manly gift that you could add a lot of that man look to it without, I'm you in know, love with this. So I think that punk. is the coolest thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, and so what'd you call it? Steampunk? Steampunk, yeah. It's using the old watch pieces and innards and metallic yeah. pieces uh, uh, just to give it a little more masculine kind of fun look. That and, is uh, really cool. But, and then, yeah, and so then the magnets go on the so back? So magnets go on the back. If you want to add the back, like I did all of these with the backing, just so it finishes off a little bit. You can leave the raw wood, but it's kind of fun because people, when they really do look at them, they're like, that kind of looks like a mouse, but it's not really, and then they, you know, they have to really kind of look at it to, to see what sure. they, their face is made out of. So it's kind of fun to trick people with that. What's the total cost for a project like this? You can get a bag of eight mouse traps for around two bucks. And it's hard to put a value on these because literally all of these are just scraps left from other projects that yeah. so I mean you're really looking at pennies um, and they each one can be different or you can buy paper in bulk and make a bunch that match but so magnets would probably be your biggest expense on these Wow and, and that's it, and that's not that expensive and that's not yeah. that expensive Wow so. so cool so what's happening over at Daisy Lane these days oh uh, you know we are getting ready for a big fall workshop we always do one around um, fall right about in another month we'll be advertising it with um, different home decor scrapbooking card making our big workshops they span an entire weekend people can come on a Friday night or they can come on a Saturday you can bring the kids and like all most of our workshops you just pay for what you want to do we'll put out all the projects some will be a sure. buck some will be 20 bucks just depending on what the project involves and so that'll yeah. be a fun time so then call the store go to online look at our website and get the details for that excellent and it's Daisy Lane scrapbooking and craft mall which will also connect you to at CI living TV Karen thanks for being here you're welcome thanks